I am delighted to welcome you all to our exclusive webinar on battery based management registration. So allow me to introduce myself. I am Deeksha Singh, your host of this webinar. I will be providing you with valuable insight into battery waste management registration. I am also honored to introduce the member of the Aleph, Mr. Vinod Kumar Sina, has joined Aleph Group as a director of global operation. So is having 36 years of experience as TDG at Bureau of Indian Standard. Also, we have Ms. Komal Yadav, our EPR technical person who will be available to address your queries during the Q&A session at the end of this webinar. So thank you for your attention and I hope to an engaging a great session ahead. So in compliance with Rule 4 of the Battery Waste Management Rule 2022, it is mandated that all producers and entities engage in battery producing must undergo registration for extended producer responsibility registration from Central Pollution Control Board by the centralized online portal. So in this webinar, I will explain the entire process of registration, battery waste and, uh, and their associated rule and regulation such as EPR introduction, battery waste management, insight into how batteries impact the environment, advantage of reusing battery for environmental sustainability. He highlights regulation for the management of battery waste. Process of registration, battery and activities. Aleph India introduction and Q&A &A session. So, the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change has officially notified the Battery Waste Management Rule on 22nd August 2022. These regulations apply to all battery types irrespective of their chemistry, shape, volume, weight or usage. Under these rules, it is mandated that producer including manufacturer and importer shall have to have obligation of extended producer responsibility for the battery they introduce in the market and the producers shall meet the collection and recycling target as given in schedule second of the rules to ensure the attainment of EPR obligation. So let's understand quickly that how batteries impact the environment. So batteries are essential part of running our gadgets and vehicles but they also bring some serious environmental concern. You see if we don't get rid of batteries properly, it can cause big problem for our environment and our health. Also, battery have stuff like lead, cadmium, mercury, and lithium, which are harmful chemical. If we throw away battery in a wrong way, these chemicals can seep into the soil and water, making this really bad. If we burn batteries, it releases harmful stuff into the air. But there is a solution: recycling, reusing battery can help us avoid these problems and even get back some useful material. So here are some advantages of reusing battery for environmental sustainability. Reduction of waste. Instead of throwing away battery after using them just once, let's reuse them. This way we cut down a lot on amount of battery waste ending up in landfills or getting burned. So for the Flexibility and adaptability. Reusing batteries allow to greater flexibility and adaptability in meeting diverse energy storage needs. Used batteries can be repurposed for various applications. These versatility help optimize the use of available resources and support the transition to a more sustainable energy landscape. For the environmental protection, extending Batteries life by reusing them means we use less energy and reduce power greenhouse gases when making new batteries. So now we will know the very important part which is our, which are key highlight of the battery waste management rule 2022 and amendment 2023 for the management of battery waste. So every producer must take responsibility for the battery they sell or use themselves. They need to ensure these batteries are recycled or refurbished as outlined in schedule second. For the, uh, for the producer also have to manage waste battery generated during manufacturing, assembling or importing. They must submit annual annual report about this waste using in form 3. 
Abri produces cell obtain registration from the Central Pollution Control Board through online centralized portal in form 1A. Once registered, the Central Pollution Control Board will issue a certificate in form AB to the producer which remain valid until cancelled or withdrawn. Every producer shall inform the Central Pollution Control Board of any changes to the information contained in the extended producer responsibility registration. The producer shall furnish a return regarding the battery manufactured or assembled or imported in the preceding financial year in Form 1C to the CPCB or before 30th June of every year. Now, in this slide, I will inform the procedure, uh, procedure of obtaining the EPR registration. So, before submit the application, we need to prepare all the necessary documents. Make sure all the details are in correct format as per the CPCB requirement. Then, submit application along with the application free P through the CPCB portal. Once application is submitted, CPCB official will review it and if all the requirements are met, then they will grant EPR registration certificate. So here are the essential documents which need to prepare for EPR registration. In general documents, following documents is required such as PAN card, Aadhaar card, GST certificate, authorized person email and mobile number, battery details, balance sheet. Also, in technical documents, following documents is required types of battery materials sales data of batteries or producer type further here are the timeline validity and compliance so time the timeline of epr procedure is 25 to 30 working days and validity the certificate will be valid for five years for compliance the Producer may engage itself or authorize any approved recycle entity for collection, recycling or refurbishment of this battery. However, the obligation of meeting the EPR target shall remain with the producer. Pred also producers shall file annual return in Form 3 regarding the waste battery collected and recycled or refurbished toward fulfilling obligation under EPR with the Central Pollution Control Board in Form 3 by 30th June of the next financial year. The detail of the register recycle from whom to extended producer responsibility certificate have been procured shall also be provided. So CPCB has imposed the penalty which is environment compensation and it will be applicable for these conditions. So, if someone does business without registration as per these rules. Secondly, if someone, if registered entity, give wrong information or hide a uh, high important fact on purpose. Also, if registered entity submit fake or change document. Further, if producer don't meet the EPR target or follow this rule properly. So I would like to take a few more minutes to tell you about Alif India Group as we started in 2009 as Alif India. Since then, we have become a trusted name worldwide for technical certification and regulatory compliance. Our goal at Alif India is to make it easy for manufacturer importer to get their product certification and comply with regulation in one place. Moreover, we provide various compliance certifications such as FMCS, ISI, CR, Hallmarking, WMI, WPC, EPR, WBWE, and EBL. We are also expert in different areas. We offer one-stop solution for all compliance needs. We have successfully completed over 50,000 projects, both domestic and international. We provided complete technical and non-technical support and proper guidance at every stage of the process. So uh, thank you everyone for listening to us patiently. Now you can raise your queries. If you have, I would like to request Ms. Kumar to take the queries ahead. Hello everyone, very good evening. My name is Komal Yadav and today I'm here to take up your queries regarding the battery waste management registration. I would request everyone, if you have any query regarding the battery waste rules and regulation or related to the compliance or registration, you can ask the question 
either in chat section or you can uh, speak up in the webinar as well. All right. So we have received one question from Mr. Ankit Chaudhary. Who requires EPR registration for battery waste management? So this is applicable for all the producers type. Likewise, in this webinar, we have received multiple questions related to EPR battery waste management. Some of these questions are, are lithium ion batteries also covered under battery waste management rules? Is EPR battery waste management applicable for clock batteries or rechargeable batteries? Do importers require battery waste management EPR registration? Do battery waste management EPR registration required only for batteries or also for the products that work on batteries? Do LS India assist in setting up a recycling unit? Does a retailer who sells battery operated toys will require EPR registration? What are the compliances required for the import of batteries? If A manufactures the, the product and B markets or import it under their brand, who should obtain EPR registration? Do we require the invoices during the return filing. Explain the definition of producers under EPR battery waste management rules. What is the last date of target obligations in EPR battery waste management? I would like to extend my gratitude to everyone, those who have joined this webinar for answers to all these questions or any inquiries about EPR registration for plastic waste management, please feel free to reach out to us using the given contact details. Thank you so much.